she's brain damaged if, if you, and people are dead. And that's exactly what I would expect to happen at an event where somebody shoots into a crowd. I don't consider several people shot dead and one person brain damaged to be proof of God's miraculous powers. Let me ask you something. What, how do you define a miracle? What's your definition of a miracle? A miracle is uh, the way God shows us is no, no, real. No, no. It's something that could never happen without God. So, so people could never, never people God. never survive a getting shot, shot in the head without God. Without God, she'd be dead, just like most people who get shot through the head with a so bullet most in their people, brain. Most so, but you admit so that there's many, some people that get shot through the head that don't die. It's pretty rare. Right, but it happens. Right. It, 10% That's of people. That's why we call it a miracle. A miracle okay, is so a, a miracle rare is thing. a rare event. It's not something that, that can't happen. It's something that could happen, but statistically would be rare. And in this case, it happens 10% of the time. So anything that's a, that happens that's against the odds, which we would assume that in a, in the universe some th some rare things will happen. Every time a rare event happens, you just say God did it. Is that what we're calling a miracle now? Well, I wouldn't say it's a miracle if you win the lottery, but I would say why it's not? A it's why a not? Rare it's event. a rare event. It's in, in fact. It's How, what it's, is the statistical odds that determine a miracle? Like, at what point is it statistically become a miracle versus a rare event? I don't think you can just. Uh, it's, you can't do science on it. That's because it's nothing to do with science. It's, so we don't really know at what point rare becomes miraculous versus just rare. Well, this isn't something you study in a university. I mean, this is... Right, but you're is, saying that you recognize miracles, and I'm asking you what they are, and you're saying they're rare events. And I said, well, there's some rare events, like winning the lottery, and you said, but that's not a miracle. So I'm saying, yeah. when do we hit the point when a rare event is then determined to be a miracle? I think you guys, I, I, you guys are playing dumb with me. I think you know exactly what I mean when I say no, a no, we don't. I, I don't know what you mean. No, I want to I'm know. asking you, how do you know, a, it was, how do you differentiate the rare medical survival event from a miracle? I, you mean if someone survives cancer? Right. Uh, I guess that's a miracle if they but, survive a deadly disease. But do you disease. do you believe that there is such a thing as natural remissions that can occur? Like, for example, if you have rats in a lab and some of those rats have cancer and they have a natural remission and, and survive, that you, I mean, are you thinking God is saving those rats, or do you think that there's sometimes a natural remission? Oh, I I understand the question now. Right. Um, it's not always a miracle. First of all, God, I don't okay. think God does miracles for rats. I think it's just for humans. Right, and I, I didn't think, think you did. I just wanted, yeah, okay. I just wanted to make it clear. I mean, I didn't think that you did think God was doing miracles for rats, but I was trying to make you understand my question better. So my question is, when you see somebody survive cancer, how do you tell the difference between a natural remission, like what we would see in a rat, which we would assume would also occur in humans, versus God fixed the person? Well, obviously, it's just a question of what you believe. I mean, no, it's not. It's a question of what you're claiming. You, um, if God did it, or if it was natural. Uh, so the God, so the doctor can't tell if it's a natural remission or a miracle. But then, how can you tell? Well, it's just I believe that when these things happen, it's God's work that He does. Except that sometimes you think it's just a rare event. It's just a really good thing that happens. That's you didn't think was going to happen, and then it happens, and you say it's a miracle. And like winning the God, lottery. God loves you, and that's how he shows you he loves you, is uh, he protects you. How do you differentiate how between a rare event that you don't think is miraculous and a miraculous rare event? I guess you can't really. It depends on different people. You might ask different people. They might say it's a miracle. Some people might say it's well, never a miracle. I, I know Maybe they say they did it. Just one okay. thing in their life is a miracle. Right. Some people might say, right. oh, like, every day there's a miracle. I know that people say this because I talk to them all the time. What I'm asking is, where's their justification when they say it's a miracle when they're also acknowledging that sometimes rare, fortunate things do just simply occur? So when they're saying, I've determined it's a miracle, I guess I'm asking, Where's their justification when they're telling me this is a well, miracle? Well, maybe there is no real justification. Right? That's my point. There you go. But that's not necessarily a problem. It is a problem. It is a problem. If you want me to believe... It's a problem if you care whether or not the things you believe are true. If you don't care if they're true, then justification for them doesn't matter. If you care if they're true, then whether or not they're reasonable beliefs to hold and there is justification for holding them becomes important. Well, I mean... <laughs> 
I, I just think it, it doesn't even matter. I think this is. I, I don't even think it matters if it's true. If it makes you Ooh, well, feel good and do good things. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, uh, in that case, then the dialogue is kind of over. And I don't mean mm -hmm. that in any kind of an offensive way. But honestly, when the person on the phone tells us they don't care if their beliefs are true or not, they just simply hold them and they don't can't justify them and they don't care then I don't really see a point in a dialogue because you're saying that even if we could demonstrate you're wrong, you don't care. You're still going to believe it or you're still going to say it's okay to hold the belief. And so to you, whether or not beliefs are true is unimportant. Well, maybe we don't have a justification for miracles. That doesn't mean we don't have a good church and we, we're not good people. I don't, uh, I, and I don't doubt we, that you're a decent person. I mean, if you were my neighbor, I would probably be fine with that. I don't think that you're, you know, killing babies in the basement. I, I find all this stuff pretty philosophical, if you ask me. I don't think it has much to do with uh, whether religion is good or bad. I mean... Well, no, I mean, reli whether religion is good or bad has to do strictly with what it does. And what I see is that there are, there are some benefits to religion, such as it, it, supp it, it supplies like a good support structure. For example, you're saying you've got this good community of people that, that are yeah, in Yeah, like church. some people, they said the Bible helped them through like a time, like a suicide. They thought they were going to commit suicide, and the Bible okay. helped them. Well, that's, well, that's not the yeah, same. Th there's a different issue there, because I sometimes wonder if Christianity specifically doesn't kind of rob us of our self-esteem by telling us that we're inherently depraved and then give us back, you know, that sort of, if you grovel, then you're acceptable to God, and that makes you worthy of something. But that's a whole different issue. Because right now, what I'm trying to say is that I agree with you that there are certain things, like the social structure of your church is probably very supportive, and it's a positive social influence on the people that attend there. I agree with you. I agree with that, too. <laughs> right. Okay. But I also understand that there is a great deal of pain going on around the globe for religious reasons because of the same doctrines that are coming out of the same book because people read that book and they read a lot of different things. And for every Christian that I've ever met who says this is what really my religion is about, I've met other Christians who say that Christian's not a real Christian and this is what my religion is about. And so I have to look at Christians and say what does each person believe in? What are they doing here? And yes, there are some good people who are Christians and there are some evil, evil people also who are Christians. And it's the Christianity that seems to motivate some of these evil things. And before you react, let me just say, I don't think that people in Nigeria would be murdering their children as witches if somebody didn't tell them God wanted them to kill witches and convince them that their child was a witch. I think that is a superstitious belief that they were convinced of that is causing those deaths that would so, not be happening if they had a real world perspective that says witches are not real. Well, I mean, my church doesn't. doesn't I understand. Uh, You're not uh, killing children. I get it. Your church is not doing that. You're a happy group of people that has a community going on, and it makes you happy. The problem is, this is a belief that proselytizes all around the globe, and different people interpret it in different ways, and it causes a lot of harm. Most of the harm that comes from the religious teaching seems to be connected to the supernatural and superstitious parts and claims about it. The parts that are good are the very real things that we agree are good, that are like you're talking about, the social structure. We get together, we sing songs, we feel happy, we like each other, we rely on each other. If someone needs help, we come together and help them. All of that is community, it's good. It would be good whether you were a, a social group or a church. It would still be good either way for you people to come together and be a good community group of people. I would support that. What I have problems with is when you start teaching people things that are superstitious and supernatural that a lot of uneducated people get a hold of, don't know how to interpret, and start hurting each other. Or you get some people who are educated who hurt people, who are like voting and saying, you know, gay people need to be not treated like other people. They need to be treated less than other people. Or they need to be, you know, that women shouldn't have the same rights as, as men. Or that, I mean, when you start getting things like that, I mean, these are people that did get a regular education who don't know how to read this and not make it hurt people. So what I'm saying is maybe if we took the good parts of it that you're saying are the good things, like the You mean community. we need to make a... a a new New Testament with, with no, uh, with no uh, supernatural thing. I'm, I'm saying maybe we can just take the good community aspects of what you do as a church and hold on to those things and maybe 
weed out some of the stuff that you're saying we can't really demonstrate and maybe it's not true but we don't really care let's is, let's is care. that what your organization does you like you just it's sort of like you help people but you have no Bible you have no we are a community group we're pretty small yeah. I mean I'm gonna admit we probably don't have the the resource power that your church has behind it for sure but we do our part we have like an adopt a street cleanup and we have a blood drive and we, so we do do community yeah. efforts and we try we're not a humanist group now i will tell you that there are secular organizations that are, are you guys do you guys belong to other organizations yeah there's yeah. like a the coalition of reason which is like a national arm that we just right. uh like had a partnership with i guess yeah we have a local yeah. coalition so um, i mean there's the but there's coalition. a little bit of networking but the thing is what you're describing would be like a humanist group or even like a Unitarian Universalist church might be more along those lines right. of like a group of people who are really getting together to do like a, a sort of almost secular I hate I don't know I don't know if it's I don't know if it's correct or incorrect to call it a secular religion, but it's almost like a secular sort of we believe in helping humanity. Yeah. And so there's a there's a group called humanists that would be secular generally said you don't have to be secular to be humanist, don't get me wrong. But right. They, their goal is just sort of like, let's promote the welfare of, of the human good. And well, I think I thought, that's I fine. I thought all you guys did was just uh, go out and, and, and uh, do protests and say uh, you don't like religion. I thought, I didn't know well, you actually did. We, well, we also other. do protests, but I yeah. honestly, I mean, there's some things that we protest that there are church groups that would protest as exactly. well and that do protest as well. For example, the, um, was it the, separate, the People United or Americans United for Americans Separation United, of Church yeah. and State is headed by a minister yeah. who, who believes that the government should stay out of religion. And so he wants to see that separate because he believes that his religion is better served by not having the government involved in what they're preaching and what they're doing. And so that is a, an area where we are aligned with certain churches who believe that it's best that the government stays out of religious belief. And so we, and we believe, of course, from the secular side, that it's good that religion stays out of the, the government. And so we see it both as a mutually beneficial thing, agreeing that religion benefits when government doesn't run it, and government does well when it, it handles the secular concerns and lets religion handle you know, the, the, the people that are religious and let them figure out what they want to do with their own yeah. religion. That's up to them. It's a personal, private decisions for them to make and not something, not something the government should be oh. dictating. Well, thank, thanks so much, guys. I, I think I have good news for you because I don't think most people, uh, I think most, I don't think most people actually like the bad parts of the Bible, so they wouldn't, they would like to get rid of that too, maybe. But I hope it you're would right. be hard for yeah. them. I hope you're right, and I thank you for your call. Yes. Okay. Well, that was interesting. It was a good call. Yeah, I appreciate okay. the call. The content of this video is produced by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you enjoyed this content and are willing and able to provide a donation, please visit the website below.